Okay, so I just finished up with the job, but uh, my customer complaint was the pool heater was not working. And I recorded a few little clips of me fixing it, so hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so we got a Hayward pool heater that's fairly new, and we were getting an LP error for low pressure. So I put the gauges on to see what our pressure was at. Maybe it's a bad switch, and our st standing pressure is at 56 PSI, and this is an R410A system. I've been trying to contact Hayward, and they keep hanging up as soon as it gets through to them. I'm gonna unmute my leak detector and bring it right here. And you can see we get crazy, crazy high on the week. So I got my soapy bubbles and sprayed right here. And I don't know if you can see that, but we are bubbling right there. So we'll ask this customer what he wants to do. Probably repair the leak since I can't contact Hayward with some breeze and we'll back him down and charge it back up. Okay, so I purged my hoses and got my recovery tank hooked up into a vacuumed recovery tank and I'm going to start the recovery. After that I'll hook up nitrogen, I'll flow nitrogen and I'll get to brazing. Okay, our recovery finished. I got my nitrogen hooked up. I'm flowing in uh, on the blue hose, out through the red, and put some heat shield there just so I don't damage anything. Um, it's the wet rag that Viper gave us, Refrigeration Technologies, and I'll try to see if I can get a good angle on uh, recording that.
Okay, so I tried to layer a little bit extra braise on there, and I did soapy bubble test it, and I got nothing. Um, I got it hooked up to a pressure test right now, and I'm gonna let it sit for a while, make sure we have no other leaks. I'll test a few other connections with soapy bubbles, like these, just to be safe. And really, any connection that I think could be suspect, so. Our pressure isn't changing though, so I'm not um, overly concerned about there being another one. Okay, because of the type of Schrader cores this has, I actually can't pull them to pull my vacuum. I would have liked to do that and hook up the true blue hoses, but I can't, so I am using my manifolds, and I am making sure that everything is going to be nice and tight. Not crazy, but tight enough so that it won't leak while I'm vacuuming. Uh, this is also kind of nice because then I'll be able to just break the vacuum with my gauges that are already hooked up and the fresh refrigerant. Uh, this system's only a year old, so it's a shame that uh, it's already leaking. But I'll get started with my vacuum. And we'll turn our turn our power on. And I'll open up my both sides, because this is gonna take a while since there's oil in the system that has refrigerant trapped in it. So I'll let this go for as long as I need. I'm actually gonna vacuum this out just for a little bit. But uh, see we're dropping. Eventually it'll show the microns right here. But yep, there we go. We'll let it pull down for a while. We'll do a decay test and everything like that. This is the vacuum pump I'm using. It's the field piece VP67 that Mike just bought me for the truck. And I found the leak with the Elitec electronic leak detector. Okay, so I actually hooked up another vacuum hose that I recently bought and uh, hooked it up to the pump just to kind of give it a little bit more, I don't know, flow. And we are dropping. I uh, closed off my gas ballast and we'll just let it vacuum for a while and see how low we can get it. Okay, so I just broke my vacuum with nitrogen, flowed a little bit of nitrogen that to get any like refrigerant out that I can and back to vacuuming and hopefully we can get it down real low. I also changed the oil on my vacuum pump. You can see this is darker. I let it out and I replaced it with the new stuff just because I've used it a few times on a few uh, systems, so I decided to change it. Okay, so I got it all charged up. Just turned the breaker back on. Gonna restore power. Turn it on. And heat to 82. Let it run for a little bit, and then I'll see if it's actually heating the water with my temperature sensor. Actually, I'm going to turn it off because I forgot to put the caps on. And we just got compressor, so I'm going to take my Klein over to the pool. We'll read our temperature. Just in the water at about 70 degrees. And then we'll see how much warmer we are at the jet. Just hold it right there. And it's hard to hold it and keep my hand there. We're at 73. 74. Go back to 
back over here. 71. And then back over at the jet. Seventy four, seventy five. It's a little tricky to get it. Holds hard there. It's hard to hold there, especially one handed, but we are heating. Let it run for a little bit, make sure it stays running without any issues. But we should be all set. And another way you can tell it's doing something, can't really tell if it's working properly by it, this, but it's discharging 59 degree air. We're at a roughly 75 degree ambient temperature right now, so it's cooling the air by 15 degrees because it is taking the heat out of the air and putting that into the pool. But I'm just wrapping everything up now and making sure everything goes away in the truck properly where it belongs. But, job complete. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this video. The customer was very happy that you know, we could get it fixed today, but also very unhappy that we had to get it fixed at, at all. At the next stop sign, because the turn units, right. It's like just over a year old. There's no warranty on it. They only have a year warranty. Uh, he, he wants to like, reach out to the installer and pay to try to get the repair paid for, but it is what it is. He's happy his pool will be warm again. The stop sign. Turn right Hopefully on you enjoyed the video. Right uh, if you did, like it, comment any advice or feedback or criticisms, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.